I'm a graduate student living in Hyde Park, so I went to the public meeting concerning the potential closing of my neighborhood middle school, Cantor Middle School. I wanted to participate in the back and forth of deliberative democracy, and as soon as I walked through the metal detectors to my seat, it became obvious that this was a shakedown. I was being extorted. You had a guy with a gun, victims pleading for their livelihood. Us kids need, as much, need education as much as adults need money. And an impassive executor. They addressed uh, a panel of CPS bureaucrats and by the way, a fourth member at the table who was the police commander for the division in case some 12-year-old decided he wanted to storm the stage. No more words needed to be said. They were going to close the schools. They were going to close on their timeline. And if I had a problem with that, they had brought their solution. Community town hall meetings are, are not dialogues. They're one person talking to another and the other is protected by a police presence. CPS administration has their solutions and I have mine. The things that we say about violence in the city, which we know is an epidemic at plague levels, right? The things that we say that it's sudden, that it's jarring, that it uh, disrupts a community, that it is traumatic, that it uproots and destabilizes. These are the same things that we can say about how these school closings are happening. These school closings are violent, and that's the problem. My wife and I spoke. We gathered up our infant and went to talk to some Hyde Parkers about the vices and virtues of Cantor Middle School. I can't do due diligence to all 50 schools on the closure list, but I can take a day or two to talk to people about Cantor. Look at what look at the research that Raise Your Hand has done. Uh, they show very in very concrete uh, terms why Cantor is not only a successful school but an exceptional school. When I first heard about the mass of neighborhood school closings, I assumed that the Chicago local school councils had been involved in the decision making process. Local school councils consist of parents, community members, teachers, and the principal of the school. These seem like the obvious people to involve if you want to try to transform a neighborhood institution in a responsible way. But the LSC was never asked, or never contacted, never involved. We are a neighborhood and a community that is passionate about our schools, and we are willing to work for free. We are actually organizing ourselves so that we can keep our schools open, so that we can lift up our neighborhood schools. If they had a plan, a long-term plan, which a lot of people have said they need. I don't think they did any research on the neighborhood to find out whether the neighborhood is growing or losing population. Intelligence is about recognizing the uniqueness of situations. Instead of working with the local school councils and the people who practically inhabit the building, the central administration came up with a formula. This formula is the ideal class size a range between 24 and 36, with 30 being the midpoint. Well, my school is, is currently estimated at 70 percent. It has to do with how many kids in each classroom. Some students need to take exams. There was nowhere where I could put a student. There's nowhere in my school where I could put a student. There wasn't a single free space, but it's 70 percent utilized. Actually, more than 26 desks don't fit in this classroom. The classrooms are not large. I went in and actually did a walk through the school with my principal just to see what the utilization is. And they do have smaller class sizes and it's wonderful. You know, they didn't have 30 in a classroom, they had 20 in a classroom. That's what these kids need. Kids that come in my classroom and tell me things like they lost family members, they lost, they saw something that shot and killed this weekend. They tell us stuff. This is the things they're going through in their neighborhood. Yet they can come to school and it's a safe place in a safe neighborhood. Cantor is a successful school. I don't care what they say. When a group of seventh graders come to the school, they're scoring on their ISAT scores in blue. I was in a horrible, horrible community, a horrible neighborhood. Last year in my school, I had gotten all F's on my report card. But this year, as I came to Cantor, it actually changed me. All right, I got better grades. They don't have to worry about getting jumped out of school. They don't have to worry about getting involved in games. They know they have teachers that really care, and they know they're also mixing with a lot of students from a lot of different parts of the city who are all together doing great stuff. That's 
same group when we look at them in eighth grade and we see the kinds of gains they've made in that one year at Cantor. As I went through, I say that don't close Cantor down. It's a wonderful school. And I know all the teachers and students that goes to Cantor really, really love it. And plus the community, all these teachers and parents. We went to the public hearings and not only do we see that the formula had been derived, but it had been derived and applied to Cantor Middle School without talking to members of the local community or the local school council. What is the city saying when we say, okay, we're just going to uproot and suddenly destabilize all that this community is because schools are still at the center of communities and that's something that we don't talk about enough.